Hello Thrivers and hopefully also subscribers, bus drivers and deep sea divers. Welcome back to Thrive the Matrix where we talk about living in reality after being red pilled with the controllers and narcs in our life. We're going to start a fun new series today and it's going to be are, do they have or do I have MPD, the celebrity edition. Remember, as one disclaimer that I always give in my videos, I am not a psychologist, psychiatrist, clinician, therapist, or life coach, although I'm an aspiring life coach. I'm not qualified to diagnose anybody with narcissistic personality disorder. So for that reason, this video is for entertainment purposes only, but entertaining it shall be. Other disclaimers, I hope that if you value this content, you'll do me a favor and hit that like button. That ensures this content is pushed out to others that will enjoy it. And only when you can rely on me to provide a quality, informational, and entertaining content should you hit subscribe. And for those that have, I appreciate the support. You may have noticed in the title, but I'll give you a hint as far as our first subject. And what we're gonna do is take this celebrity Take the list that's in the DSM-5, and typically you need to meet five of the nine criteria to be diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder. So we'll make our estimate based on the facts and my assessment. I hope you'll agree, and if you don't, please let me know in the comments. But I chose our first celebrity because I think this is an inspiring step forward for this uh, YouTube channel and uh, for this playlist. And so we're gonna talk about none other than the illustrious Elizabeth Holmes. Um, Elizabeth Holmes, I believe, was born in 1981, is from Houston, Texas. Her mother was a congressional staffer. Her father was a Enron executive. He did absolutely get laid off when Enron imploded. And it's worth noting that the family was descendant a few generations back from the gentleman that revolutionized yeast, I suppose, with the Fleischmann yeast industry or company. Uh, by the time Elizabeth Holmes was born, the, the bloom was off the rose with Fleischmann yeast, but there was always a sense the family wanted to get back the status that they previously had anecdotally and i think i can only posit that maybe elizabeth holmes may have caught on to this fairly early um, and, and decided she would be the one to bring that bloom back to that rose and we'll talk about it a little bit more when we get into the dsm-5 but for those who haven't seen the trial who haven't seen the dropout on hulu who i'm not affiliated with or the documentary the inventor on hbo which i'm also not affiliated with uh, Elizabeth Holmes invented a proprietary technology called the Mini Lab that took a nanotainer that uh, used a lancet to get one or two pricks of blood. It would fall into the nanotainer. The nanotainer was placed into the Mini Lab. The Mini Lab was a lab in a miniature box, almost like a, a Mac PC, uh, and it would spit out test results for a panel of different blood tests. In fact, when she would have executives on site, Elizabeth would prick the executives' blood, have them watch the nanotainer be placed in the mini lab, take them to lunch, have the phlebotomists or the lab technicians pull them out of the box, run them either on traditional machines or at the lab bench, and then put them back in the machine so that after lunch, they would magically get the results, and of course the box worked. It was proved over time that box did not work, and I'm actually surprised um, because she had uh, illustrious board members. Peculiarly enough though, they were mostly heads of state or government officials instead of qualified medical professionals. So I think Elizabeth was a bit calculated in that she knew she had to get some illustrious important people on the board, but she didn't want them to have too much expertise in what she was doing to see through the charade. Um, to be honest, if I'd give, been given an hour to think about it, I'd be able to tell you there's a reason LabCorp and Quest, who I'm not affiliated with, probably use those multiple large tubes of blood for the panoply of tests that our doctors have run. I think if it could be done on a drop of blood, they'd be doing it. And I'm actually surprised they didn't come out as highly skeptical at the time, knowing what they did about their own technology. But Theranos would go on to take their technology, configure it to the samples they were collecting, and run their samples on third-party machines to conceal, conceal the fact that the machines didn't work. I think in about 2016, 2017, a man named John Carreyrou and the Wall Street Journal, with the help of some internal whistleblowers, published an article saying that the technology was bunk. She had top flight lawyers. It basically fell apart from there. It took forever to go to trial. Once it did, she was convicted, I think of four or six counts, 
Her lover and CEO, Sonny Balwani, was convicted of all 12, and it was quite a bit of time before either one of them went to jail, and they're both in jail, I believe, for 10 and 9 and a quarter years, respectively, instead of 11 and 12 and a half, I think. They both had some time shaved off for, for good behavior. Um, so that's really the, the, it in a nutshell. But let's talk about Elizabeth Holmes, the DSM-5, the fact that we need to meet five of the nine criteria, and then let's talk about whether we think she may be a candidate to be on the spectrum for narcissistic personality disorder. So the first one is an exaggerated sense of self-importance. And I think we saw that early in her childhood. Um, I can tell you when I was uh, maybe eight or nine years old, I was worried about having the Super Soaker 30 while my friends had the Super Soaker 50 or 100 to get creamed in the woods. Uh, or whether or not the ice cream man was going to come and I was going to get 50 cents or 75 cents, which was the difference between an ice cream sandwich and a bubble play. But apparently Elizabeth Holmes at that age was so self-possessed that she had dreams of being a millionaire. So maybe you could argue she did have exaggerated sense of self-importance. And I would posit that this actually continued later in life because while she had proprietary technology and she did believe LabCorp and Quest were coming after her. It's been said that she installed bulletproof glass on her windows in the office and she did travel with a full security detail on private jets. I think that's a little bit of overkill and I don't think you would have taken that many steps unless you felt you were pretty important. So I think we're going to give her a, a yes for check number one. Uh, the next one is grandiose dreams or fantasies of success, love, beauty, power, and I think we had a mix of all of that in this case. I know text messages that were released in the trial and Elizabeth Holmes and her CEO, Sonny Malwani, who turned out to be romantically involved, exchanging text messages about how Theranos would be a company that conquered the world. Next year would be the year they would execute. She would give speeches, TED Talks, and how they were going to revolutionize healthcare, had personal anecdotes about uncles dying of cancer to stress just her passion for making sure nobody has to say goodbye too soon. So it was pretty clear they wanted to conquer the world. And the fact that they went forward with putting machines in Walgreens, which they did later when they did not work, uh, shows that they had very real dreams of grandiose success that they should have given up on or pulled back on and they did not. So I think we can give her a check for that one. Uh, the next one is the excessive need for admiration. I'm gonna give her a pass on this one. She was on many magazine covers. I know she was in a state dinner, I think for the Prime Minister of Japan at the White House. I know I think she did a cover for Inc, Fortune Magazine, ton of panels. But I don't know if that was really at her instigation, which I'm sure she had a part in, or if that was just the media fawning over her, but she was everywhere all at once, probably to her detriment. And I'm gonna say, given that there's nine criteria, she did talk about her dream a lot. I do believe she believed in it or had a zealous quality about her that believed in it against all odds. So I'm gonna give her a pass on the excessive need for admiration. So far we have two out of three. Um, the next one is a delusional sense of status. And this one's difficult for me too, because she had a huge sense of status and I don't think she was delusional. I mean, I have to give her credit for going out and she did have some family connections, but every family has a couple of connections. A family has a next door neighbor. I would still be nervous to go talk to him about giving me a job. Not only did she do that, but she got half of those people's people to get put, you know, to put heads of state on the board and convinced people, including Tim Draper and Don Lucas, to give her millions upon millions of dollars, not including Walgreens. So I would argue that she worked for that. Maybe she had a delusional sense of status that made her so confident that it was bulletproof when she went in and was able to convince them she earned that money, but I'm going to give her a pass on that. Um, there's also the need or the thought that you are special and therefore it can only be understood by other special people. I think text messages between Elizabeth Holmes and Sonny Balwani indicate that they both thought that they knew everything about the tech when both of them were severely underqualified, one being a software programmer, the other being Stanford dropout, and that only people in their orbit that were smart enough to get it would believe that Theranos technology actually worked. And anybody that didn't believe that just wasn't sophisticated enough to understand the technology. So I'm actually gonna give her a ping for that. So, so far we have an exaggerated sense of self. We have the fantasies of success, uh, power, brilliance, and beauty. We gave her a pass for the excessive need of admiration. 
Uh, we're going to give her a ding for delusional sense of status, and we're gonna get her for thinking she's special enough only to be surrounded by certain people. So with that being said, I think the next point is a slam dunk for adding this to her diagnosis, which I am not doing. I'm not diagnosing or theorizing. It's for entertainment purposes only, but a lack of empathy. When there are whistleblowers or when there's any sniff or whiff of dissent in the company, David Boyes, and if you haven't heard of David Boyes, he's one of the top lawyers in the country. We are not talking about Alan Rothenberg, the injury lawyer. David Boyes is huge. He actually... I believe tried the case for Bush versus Gore in the 2000 election that we know was won by a hair by George W. Bush um, and some other high profile cases. They spent a lot of money throwing lawyers after whistleblowers or anybody that could see any proprietary information outside of the building that made sure they signed ironclad, uh, you know, NDAs. Um, and, and and actually it's documented and it was testified at trial that there were two employees, Tyler Schultz, who was the grandson of Secretary of State George Schultz, and Eric Chung, who was a colleague, were both tailed by private investigators. I would think that you'd have to have a certain lack of empathy to be so zealous and so protective that not only are you willing to lie, but you're willing to tail young people in their first job post-college, come hell or high water. So I'm gonna get her on that one as well. Um, the next one is an exploitative, <clears throat> just being highly exploitative, and I would have to say, or exploitative in your interpersonal relationships, and we're talking about someone that even before, before Theranos was huge on Silicon Valley, you know, participated in clinical trials with pharma companies, testing a machine that was nowhere ready for production on cancer patients. Now, these cancer patients, at least based on what I saw in the dropout, knew that they were toast, as the actress says, that played the cancer patient in the miniseries. But nonetheless, having their blood being able, having their blood taken from a single prick on their finger, rather than the veins that were worn out in their arms, and the fact that it was emerging technology, may have given them false hope that it could do something to change their situation. And in that, in that way, I think that Elizabeth Holmes definitely did exploit um, exploit people and in fact she was cleared of all charges against patients although that was just based on the fact that the government i think only put four witnesses up when there were millions and millions of tests done by theranos voided and no one could find the database with the test results to admit it in court to say otherwise <clears throat> the last one is going to be envious of others or believing others are envious of her I think I'm going to give her a pass on this one. I think mainly she was envious of her family's former status as the Fleischmann yeast heirs or heiresses. Um, but I think she was pretty far removed from that. I'm not sure who she was trying to make jealous. And I do believe there was some hard work that went into it. Um, I do believe, if anything, she was a zealot. But she had brains. She was smart. She had presence. She had confidence. She worked hard. Um, and I think she did it probably at the start for a good cause and it just got away from her and all those other marks on the DSM-5 that we gave her got the best of her and uh, that led to her downfall but I think we're going to give her a pass on, uh, on Envy. So, so far looking at my list over here to my right, I think we have exaggerated feeling of self-importance, fantasies of success, power, brilliance, the excessive need for uh, admiration we gave her a pass on, so we're at two, although she had a delusional sense of status, which is three, thought her technology could only be interpreted by people as special as her, even though it could not, which is four, definitely couldn't empathize when she's sending private investigators after people for the sake of uh, hiding patient test results and saving her company, would take her to five. This is almost reading like the federal sentencing guidelines <laughs> based on her convictions. I think she was interpersonally exploitative, so that's gonna give her six. Uh, I'm gonna give her a pass on Envious. So we're looking at, based on my entertainment only purposes, rough diagnosis, six out of nine. So I would think, and we haven't even peeled the onion as far as some of the actions Elizabeth Holmes took during, after her trial, and while she's been incarcerated um, to this late stage. So there you have it, folks. Uh, you could make, a point that maybe there was some communal narcissism in there wanting to do 
for the greater good while sacrificing the well-being of those closest to her. And I would definitely say that based on the DSM, she's got criteria that she may want to take a serious look at, and I think she's got plenty of time to do it. What do you think? Do you think I assess her accurately? How would you assess her based on the DSM, knowing that we always theorize, we never diagnose, and we never theranose? Let me know in the comments. Also, let me know in the comments who you'd like to do the DSM-5 with next for the criteria that would indicate that we are dealing with someone with narcissistic personality disorder. Until then, thrivers, bus drivers, pie divers, subscribe, like, and stay up.